All right, and welcome to Fast Break Breakfast NBA Podcast. My name is Keith Parrish, and I'm here once again with my buddies through the miracle of computer phone. I'm here with Dave DeFore. Dave, how's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, Dave to 48 minutes in the house. Also joined today by Sean Keen, aka America's Uncle Dad. That's right. That's right. Hi. How's it going, Keith and Dave? Good I'm, to see you guys. I'm good. And as you heard, Dave is fine. Um, I, I said your name with a question mark because I was worried I was going to mess it up. You are America's Uncle Dad. Congratulations on your comedy album. You, you, were, you, so- you were number one on the iTunes charts for a little bit. I was for one week uh, because you need that like month of pre-sales to knock Weird Al off the number one <laughs> spot. Like uh, it's funny because you do get some stand-up albums up there, but the top five is Weird Al albums and Adam Sandler albums that I bought in the nineties. Basically, that's amazing. So pretty well, good shelf life. Die on those. after that. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> What's wrong with Dane Cook's albums? Aren't they? Oh I, don't know. I, mean, I feel like, like they would have been up there too. Yeah, He's performing in that circle. You know, I don't think I've ever seen any Dane Cook stand up because just what I saw of him, whether it was on like Conan or whatever, I was just not interested. Well, it was like um, if someone handed you a plate of green eggs, like. Eh. Nah, I'm good. You got to try those green eggs and ham. That's the no. entire moral of the story. The entire yeah. moral. <laughs> Is you gotta try, Dave? Yeah. You're gonna be you're gonna be the cat at the end. Wait, it's not a cat. It's the Sam, whatever that is. But yeah. you're you're gonna try Dane Cook last day of a, of, the, of the final pages of the book. You're gonna be like, you're gonna you're gonna. This is Dane amazing. Oh. on a boat with a goat or on <laughs> a train in the rain. That's I feel like funny. I've seen I've seen Dane Cook self aware playing himself. Was that like on the We're never gonna That's mention again the Louis? Yeah, they went. That, we're not supposed to talk about that show that happened. That was critically lauded for so many seasons. Um, yeah, Dane Cook has himself on Louis. Not bad. I assume it's been scrubbed from the internet. Um, yeah, no one talks about that show anymore, really. Yeah, no. I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um. Fellas, thanks for joining. Um, It's good to have a three-man booth going as we talk about the end of the NBA regular season and we look ahead to the most exciting week in basketball. That's right. Play-in week, baby. Um, Play-in is happening and then, of course, leading to uh, the actual playoffs. Before we get there, I would say let's start with our breakfasts, but I want to tell you guys what happened immediately before recording. My neighbor called me. My neighbor is an older lady who lives by herself. and like most of our conversations on the phone, it starts with Keith, are you home? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. And she tells me then, Hey, so last night my cat brought me a mouse. And again, we don't talk that much. So I'm already like, where is this going? Um, she's like, my cat brought me a mouse last night and then the mouse ran away. And now I'm thinking, Oh, does she want me to catch a mouse in her house? Um, speaking of Dr. Seuss, that just came out. Um, <laughs> And she's like, well, then my cat brought the mouse back to me in the morning and it's dead. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And now I'm thinking, does she want me to take a dead mouse outside? Because yeah, yeah. why can't she just take a dead mouse outside? Yeah. Um, then I'm thinking, does she want me to bury a mouse? Or like, <laughs> does she want me to dig a hole or something? Like, uh, again, why can't she do this? Um, but the, she's like, yes. Yeah, so there's a dead mouse in my house and most of its insides are on the outside. I'm like, oh, she's like, could you help me get it outside? And I'm like, yeah, do you just not like, I guess she doesn't like gross things or something. Um, so, so I go over there with like rubber gloves and I bring some, some like plastic Kroger bags. I'm like, let's just get this dead mouse out of the way. Um, turns out it's on a, uh, it's on like her little back. It's on like a little rug. The cat left it, you know, ni- neatly on, on like a little doormat. And I'm like, oh, this is very clean. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just take this outside um, and throw it over you know, the fence in your backyard. It'll be some, some road roadkill or some, bird or something's going to come the eat cat it. will bring it back yeah, yeah apparently it's an indoor cat um so she got it out oh. of the, the this thing was in uh her garage uh but here's here's the only twists one she doesn't like touching gross things fair i guess okay. um ask the 40 year old guy next door to come do it okay um uh was not a mouse it was a chipmunk i was like that's oh. not i was like that's not a mouse first of all that's like it's like brown and it's like pudgy and there's no long tail you know yeah. i was like that's i like that's a chipmunk also i was like but where's the rest of it 
Because <laughs> there was because there was no head. I was like, there's oh, no. Oh, I was oh, like, I was like, cats, so cats are psychopaths. They decapitate yeah. everything. Well, yeah. So so I'm like I'm like all right. So I I, t- I took it outside. And I'm like I don't know what you're gonna do with this little this little rug. Are you gonna just throw it? In the, I mean, just throw it in the wash. I mean, like blood comes out with cold water, right? And yeah, Dave, you yeah. would know wrestling career. I just, guess I don't know, man. <laughs> if it gets blood on it, it's over. Yeah, the, but no, you get you get your own blood on a shirt. It just comes out. Seltzer. So well, did, you, did you look at that cat and give him the Kobe Bryant and go? Job's not done. <laughs> that's right that's right yeah you're not, it's oxyclean oxyclean so works I, I i took i took the the chipmunk carcass that was headless and i threw it out and it there was a good deal of uh um entrails on the outside like it was a lot actually yeah. but uh i was like but there's i was like there's clearly no head there was no head so like the, the head somewhere and i'm like is the head under your couch um and so <laughs> so i actually look i moved her couches around i looked under we didn't find the head i was like maybe and then i was like i was like the cat might be outside eat. well i was like but the cat doesn't go outside this is what she kept oh, saying the right. cat doesn't go outside yeah. i'm like what well, was the head in your garage she's like no it was it had a head when it was in the house earlier because apparently it brought it in it was running around and it hit under a couch so i think either i mean do you guys know do cats eat skulls can can a cat eat the head i wouldn't think maybe you would they do eat trophy? bones but yeah, like I I've don't seen, know about the head. The head, you, you, yeah, the head is hidden somewhere. Two seasons of Hannibal, and I think that the cat must have a trophy. <laughs> it's got a trophy. Yeah. Well, I told her Has she's she like the refrigerator. Her cat, her cat was it was a chunky little little fella. It was a big old cat, and she's like the cat can't fit under the couch. I'm like that's fair. <laughs> um, but my cat, my cat takes my Legos and, and, and stashes them under the couch. It likes uh, it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It actually like, it just takes little Legos. It bats them down the stairs. It bats them across the carpet <laughs> and then it bangs it under the couch. And it just like, and they can't it, like, I don't think, he, I don't think the cat's thinking I want to hide these for later. Right. I think it's just like, oh, I want to hit this so bad. I want to hit this so bad. I want to hit this so bad. And then it finally knocks it under the couch. It's like, oh, I can't reach it anymore. I'm gonna go find another one. Um, so anyways, that was my day, uh, or my, my, uh, my morning was the highlight was asking my neighbor, hey, where's the rest of this chipmunk? Yeah, great. And her do, being like, do what? chipmunks have extensive, uh, you know, like uh, digestive system? You said there were a lot of entrails. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't uh, identify what I was looking at. I'm sorry. It. I assume it was some kind of it. Yeah, I don't know. Extensive digestive systems? Uh, how am I supposed to know? I just saw a disemboweled. You know, like uh, a, a dog has a short digestive system. You say I right. I know Human no being I don't know like you know we've got like ten miles of intestines yeah right yeah, yeah. I don't know okay. the mysteries of the morning um we'll have to find out another never, day never never gutted a chipmunk anyways speaking of disemboweled rodents has anyone had breakfast uh, I had I had some toast with peanut butter on it so mm, it was peanut butter me toast that I needed to to eat protein uh quickly upon waking up for who told you that yeah. Uh, society. I'm sure, I just okay. read the it pa- somewhere. The patriarchy. Yeah, sounds that sounds. <laughs> usually, I have a. Usually, I have a. I'll have a like eggs in some form. Yeah. But today I was podcasting, so I had peanut butter toast. Peanut butter toast. My son, nine year old boy, obsessed with protein. Looking at the ingredients or the nutrition information on this box of anything with the protein, and I'm always like, "You're you're American. You're going to have enough protein. Like, there's not." Yeah. You're going to get protein. You're, you're never going to not have enough. Like it's yeah. also, you don't exercise and you're super skinny. Like you're, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you know, if your, if your birthright I, I also as think, an American. <laughs> yeah. You don't, he's so excited about like the protein level of like Nutrigrain bars. And I'm like, listen, you don't, first of all, need protein from that. And yeah. uh, you'll be fine. Yeah. Dave, what yeah. you're, I think people, people should just pay attention to the calories first. Yeah. You know, that's like, yeah. let's start, let's start with the easy. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I had breakfast, Keith. Oh, look at you, Dave. Because I'm just now forcing it on the days we record. Also, I'm like going to try to. Um, yeah, you know, did a little egg and sausage, uh, turkey sausage scramble. Nice. Threw, threw an avocado in there. There we go. Some kimchi. You know, some hot sauce. Good stuff. Good stuff I, for you. I have, a, I have a question, Dave. I bought on a whim a book about fermentation. Am I actually going to make kimchi like I'm dreaming that I'm going to I mean, do? You could, or should I just go to a market and buy it from some? Yeah, I would just go buy it. Yeah. I would go buy it. Um, I, you know, I lived in South Korea 
And I used to, my neighbor or not my neighbor, my landlord lived below me and I had an apartment above Mm -hmm. and on the roof was essentially like a rooftop deck where they dried chilies and made kimchi. So I had a steady supply of kimchi in my refrigerator, like literally like fresh every day. Um, It does not seem like something that people our age should have time to do. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we were retired, oh man, making kimchi, I, I'm definitely doing that yeah. in retirement. But um, I would just buy it. Well, isn't I that do it while doing a playback stream of a Warriors game? <laughs> now, <laughs> listen, I, a Twitch stream of you doing uh, making kimchi and putting it in a pot and and talking about the Warriors probably do okay. Actually, I would do better than the than <laughs> what I am. Yes. Doing. Okay, yeah, Don't yeah. watch the game. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of things that I've come across as a host of a basketball slash breakfast thing podcast where people are like oh yeah i make my own oatmeal i'm like oh is that cheaper no, no. it's like oh yeah. well all right <laughs> it- but, but cheap and better are two different things oh right? absolutely like- i'm not saying yeah. but also like i feel like you could buy top shelf oatmeal also still not that not that expensive sure, like i make my own pasta sauce yeah because yeah. when you buy pasta sauce in the in the jar it's got yeah. like sunflower oil or canola oil or- yeah, yeah. yeah it's not olive oil um, so I, I, you know, there are a lot of things where it's like, no, this takes longer, but it's a way better and b worth it. I'm kimchi talking about is, something with fewer ingredients yeah. than pasta sauce. Yeah. Kimchi is, I would, I just buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Korean man. Uh, so that, or a Korean grandmother who I think would but be the best. Source. They have the rest. I don't have access to one either. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but also I live in a city that has, uh, I'm sure plenty of, oh yeah. Uh, like, like it absolutely. I have a variety. There's got to be an app that's like KM, uh, I don't know, and then like whatever the symbol for chi is that yeah. delivers fresh kimchi to your door every Monday. Here's the other thing I've been living here in the in my home here for almost a year and have not sought out kimchi at a market, so that might just mean that maybe I don't want the kimchi bad enough, you know? Yeah, you don't get some yeah. kimchi. You got to get that, but you know, I, that I mamba mentality really, about your it kimchi. Be, it's true. It, yeah. I do think it would be really good on eggs. I generally it is perfect. I like it. I like an egg and kale scramble. Yeah. For All right. Well, that That's was uh, that was kimchi corner brought to you by <laughs> Emir- Emirates Airlines. Um, after oh, no Korean Air, by the way. I'm One sorry. I did, not, I, did not re- I did not receive a check from Korean Air. Uh, yeah. I, I'm wearing I'm wearing my NBA referee jersey with the Emirates patch on it right now. <laughs> um, you can customize those at the NBA store. Buy your own. Oh, I wish you could. Um, that would be actually. I can see why I, they don't allow so, that. I gotta um, get you a key. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, those were our breakfast. After our breakfast, we move into our breakfast in bed. Apologies. This is my chance to make right what I got wrong on a previous episode. It's frequently. Frequently, the first time we talk about the NBA, um, on last episode, I floated this theory and I asked to crowdsource some help about this theory. I was saying, I think it's possible the NBA has totally begun ignoring all travels in the last two minute report. They're just not going to mention travels anymore, even if they're blatant. They're not going to say correct no call. They're just not even going to acknowledge those happened. Well, turns out I was wrong. Uh, in the Grizzlies Lakers game from last Friday night. They in fact did point out that LeBron James traveled twice in the final two minutes. Those um, travels were not called. The Grizzlies lost uh, by three in a game where three calls went in the Lakers favor in the final two minutes, including those two LeBron James travels. So my theory was shot down very quickly. And the Lakers also gained two points from the shot clock being incorrectly reset earlier. Uh, no, the entire NBA world or anyone viewing the game was treated to an extra, I believe it was one minute and seven seconds of the third quarter. The third okay. quarter was 13 minutes and seven seconds long. Yeah. Um, that only helped Jordan Goodwin had his career high stats from that game. Um, it would have been funnier if LeBron James was on the court for this. Like if you made yeah. LeBron James play an extra minute, but yeah, there was um, the, the Grizzlies got called for consecutive shot clock violations. And both times when they're like, no, 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 we need to reset the shot clock. Cause like it, the shot clock didn't was incorrectly reset. The officials bowler whistle says to say, no, 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 no shot clock violation Lakers ball. And both times they do this, the clock, 
had gone under 220. It resets back to two minutes and 20 seconds in the third quarter. Um, no one noticed, not in the arena. I would have noticed, but I was barely watching the game. So he, yeah, yeah. You weren't I mean, I would listen, if I, if, if I were there, it wouldn't have happened. I would yeah. have certainly <laughs> paid attention. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. I lot. listen. I mean, respect to the refs, but I'm different. Yeah. And, um, no, I didn't notice it happening. One thing I was getting worked up because this was a game where in a season where I've accepted l- losing and I'm yeah. like, I don't care anymore. These games are meaningless. Mm-hmm. Uh, these players are never going to play for the Grizzlies again outside of Gigi Jackson. But this game actually made me angry. Like I really wanted to win. I really wanted to condemn the Lakers to the 9-10 game. Mm-hmm. And we were we were ahead. And I started getting really mad at the refs for missing calls. And uh, I started looking up the, the refs involved in the game. There's this guy in this game, Scott Wall. He's like a referee who is, you recognize him because he's been around forever. He's worked for 28 years in the NBA. This is his 28th season. According to the NBA's referee website, he's only gotten 14 playoff games in 28 years. This is a guy who was, in my mind, was blowing a bunch of fouls against the Grizzlies. He seemed like a company man. Um, His favorite show is NCIS. His favorite food is pot roast. this guy, they're like, hey, man, you're really not going to advance in our corporation. Do you want to maybe get out? Nope, I'm good. I'm just going to go. He's 1,443 an regular season games officiated. Yeah. 14 and only 14, games. 14 playoff, playoff games games. in 28 insane. years. Yeah. Hey, he's getting one playoff game uh, uh, every, every two, other every year. Two on, years. On, on average. Oh, my God. Like, I understand. Get, not, okay, now, this is shocking. No, I understand getting none in, like, your first 10 years. Like, that's fine. You got to work your way up. But like, you've been in there three decades and you're still not getting Pacers magic first round. Do now, we know I wonder. Referee assignments yet? Well, hang on. <laughs> no, we don't. Well, hang on. They, ha- they haven't even dropped the third, the, like the 28 names of the officials who will work in the postseason. Wow. That, hasn't, that hasn't dropped yet. I'm, I'm looking at his resume uh-huh. and it does say, I mean, he, he uh, has officiated USA basketball. He worked yeah. in the ACC, Ohio Valley. Yeah. So we did a bunch of college and and a bunch of high school on the way up. So I yeah. wonder if part of this is like maybe he hadn't been full time for this whole time with the NBA. Maybe not. I, I don't yeah. know. Fourteen hundred games is a lot. Man, yeah. now, th- listen, that is a that is a really hard job. And, and like I'm, I pick on these guys. It is a very hard job. Mm-hmm. But I can't imagine. Not at like 14 playoff games in 28. It says years? there aren't he, that many referees. He refed, he refed an all star game, and that made me start thinking about like who gets the all star games. I thought it was just Is the that, best refs, but maybe it's just I like a pat a on the back assignment. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, hey, you get to do this one time, we'll just take a rotation. Like, they're like, hey, man, yeah. Scott, he's done a thousand games, let's hook him up with one all star. Doing um, the all star game is like having to work on New Year's Eve. You know what I mean? I feel like, like it's a little better for reps, though. Of, yeah. I mean, it's. I'm sure it's nice. I'm sure you get paid. I mean, you get more money. I mean, but. you think Scott Foster's going to Cabo? On the, like, 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 what are the refs actually doing? It's not like the NBA players where they're like, man, I got to get out and get my five day vacation. Scott Foster's going to Vegas, right? Yeah. <laughs> Scott, yeah. Scott Foster's getting to. <laughs> they're like, well, how do I, how do I change these first class He's in a business class. Jonte Porter's Discord. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> By the way, uh, we do have referee assignments for the playing games tonight. Uh, oh, the crew chief. I know who's Lakers working Lakers Pelicans. Pelicans. Yeah, it's Scott Foster. That's right, baby. Um, I don't really know much about crew chief James Williams, who's working the Golden State Sacramento game. But uh, the Warriors about seven years ago uh, really went after uh, Marat Kogut. Yeah, after yeah, yeah. A game, uh, I think, in Minnesota where they waved off. Uh, Two three pointers and then um well so I will say yeah, they, it, yeah. my ahead. biggest hang on can I go back to Scott Wall? Yeah, he, yeah. He has Please. skydiving on his bucket list. Yeah, bucket list. He yeah. can do that this morning. <laughs> it's true. Guys, listen, I, I I'm not a bucket list guy, but yeah, dream bigger. <laughs> like mine, listen, I want to go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> That I did his cup on there, and I did that one already. So I got to think bigger. Yeah, there's I mean, no way he's not, he's also in mil. You know how many cities is he in? Every he year? wants to go to Rome. That's the place <laughs> that he's most likely to visit. Just do it. <laughs> it's easy. Just yeah, you can. That's not a hard direct flights to Rome. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, now, the man's the man's yeah, works twenty eight seasons in the NBA. So he's like making four hundred grand a year. Yeah. I, you know, like. He's got the perfect life, Keith. He doesn't have to do the playoffs. 
Let's think yeah. about this the right yeah. way. He's free, free, he's free every playoffs. May. He's watching, <laughs> right? He's only had to do, I think, one All Star game. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it was Orlando. Orlando in February is beautiful. Probably got some good golf in. Probably got uh-huh. free Disney tickets. Listen, do you know how yeah. hard it is to get and a passport it, now? I mean, he it takes Bond forever. Movies. This guy is a ama- All right, I've turned the corner on this guy. This guy might actually be winning at life. I mean, but but why hasn't he been to Rome yet? He's got some. Know. He's he's, he's so got so much time off. He ha, he's got a Jerry Gergich level success in life. Right? He's yeah, very comfortable, yeah. li- modest tastes, living life. I, I like your yeah, very achievable bucket list. Yeah, I'd like to do, I'd like to do one thing that cost five hundred dollars, yeah, and you can do go. in most American cities. <laughs> Probably do it for free. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I'm a referee. Uh, Get the referee account to make a social hey, social media content about it. I won't call this one LeBron travel. That's right. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll ignore fouls against Jake Laravia for one night. Oh my god! I'll pay Are for you my excited skydiving. about watching Scotty Pippen Jr. go off like that? Scotty Pippen Jr. was a breath of fresh air in my season. That guy can play basketball. He really um, can. Those uh, those were our. That was my breakfast in bed apology. Now, um, I want to I want to run some things by you guys. We're going to talk about the playoffs. We're going to try to predict what we think is going to happen. And what I will say feels like the most wide open playoffs we've had in a long time. But um, before we get there, there were several things that happened on the final day of the regular season. I want to get your opinions on this is like uh, maybe eight things that I observed. And I don't know if you want to tell me if this is a thing or not. All right, my biggest takeaway, I don't know if y'all had a bigger takeaway from the final day of the regular season. My, my biggest takeaway was the Cavaliers were cowards. And oh. they were and they were cowardly in a way that deeply harmed them. Deeply. They it was a terrible They outcome. were playing the Hornets, they were resting guys. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I understand maybe Donovan Mitchell, he seemed banged up all year. Darius Garland frankly seemed to step slow all year. Maybe those guys actually hurt needed the day off, but they like yanked Isaac Okoro and Max Struess after picking up his first career triple double. They benched these guys against the Hornets. The Hornets were playing their backups. They had a 10 point lead and they gave it away. They lost the game to the Hornets. They basically tanked this fourth quarter against the Hornets because they didn't want to be the two seed. Yeah. Because the Bulls were beating the Knicks, but also like the Bulls Knicks game, it was close the whole way. So you have mm-hmm. to know at any point, either one of those teams is going to win that. You know, it could yeah. go either way. But they're like, all right, if we're the two seed, we might have to play the Sixers or the Heat. The Heat. The heat. And they were like, You're oh, I don't want to do that. And so they're like, you know what I would rather do? I'd rather go to the Celtics side of the bracket and face the Magic in the first round. My thought, here's my, this is how I believe everyone has interpreted this. They're thinking, hey, losing in the first round would be catastrophic. Uh-huh. I would rather be a coward and take what I think is going to be a weaker opponent. I'd rather play the Magic than possibly Joel Embiid. So because of that, I would greatly reduce my chances of making the conference finals. Well, they did this. It turns out the Bulls lost to the Knicks. So if they'd won that game against the Hornets, they actually would end up being the three seed. They would have gotten to play the Pacers, which, I mean, all respect to the Pacers. Cavs, Pacers, that's not bad. Like The the Cavs beat them two days earlier fairly easily. And like like Friday night they played. But a even team. even and if you're like, all right, Matt, you maybe like the ma- the matchup with the Magic more than the Pacers. But like you're talking about your pass to the conference finals uh-huh. is like you you play the Pacers in the first round, and then you might play the Magic in the second round, or or yeah. like the box that lets who's hurt, like Gian- yeah. Giannis hurt. But you avoid you've avoided not just Embiid or Jimmy Butler, you avoid the Celtics. This is so embarrassing. It's so short-sighted. Also, here's my big other big problem with it. If they lose to the Magic, you've it's over. You've guaranteed everyone gets fired. It's yeah. over. Like, like you that's what's I, gonna happen. Yeah. That's yeah. karma. I, I mean, look, the basketball <laughs> gods thing is is maybe a little overdone, but it is true, man. I do think that like it it's a vibe shift if you you know do stuff like this. I, I do, do think, not yeah. believe it's it's a good way to operate a basketball team. Now, look, there's there's no reason Donovan Mitchell should have signed an extension already. Like, financially, he's better off letting his contract expire. There's just no reason to do it. But that, that's the thing. It's not that the basketball gods see what you're doing. It's you're 
team sees what you're doing. Your guys are like, oh, they they don't think we can handle the the Sixers and Joel and B playing on one leg and yeah, the like Heat we've beaten this year. I mean, so I know that the Cavs' official story is they were just resting people, but they put out a lineup. I don't know if anyone has ever put out a five man unit that contains two guys who are the worst brother of an NBA player. <laughs> they had Isaiah Mobley yeah. and Pete Nance in the game at the same time, along with Tristan Thompson. They were playing four centers and Imani Bates. Yeah, Imani Bates was the point guard. The I mean, guard. they they weren't resting anybody. They pulled out Max Truce. Like, he, he got his triple-double, and they pulled him out immediately. It was... Are they resting Dean Wade? Was it Dean was, Wade? It Dean was Wade so bizarre. Be I don't Dean know. Dean Wade, I think he's hurt. Um, yeah. The, they had someone who wasn't a center that didn't need to. Run. Also, like the Sixers, if you can't beat the Sixers as they are right now, like, yeah. I mean, Joel Embiid does not look okay. He got banged up even more against the Magic. I got D'Anthony Milton's out for uh, his back's not doing good. Yeah. Um, like, I understand, like, I understand kind of trying to massage your opponent for a slightly better opponent, but to, to greatly lower your odds of making the conference finals, and to say like we can't even face these teams like that is yeah. it's just it's just so wild weak. to me. It's weak, and they're gonna lose to the Orlando <laughs> Magic. <laughs> yeah, I've all that to just lose in the first round anyway. And Donovan Mitchell is gonna get a, a front row seat for a team that, wow, would yeah, that really Donovan Mitchell like... fit really well in Orlando. <laughs> oh, there's and no state sales tax, no here? income tax in Orlando, <laughs> no expectations like, either. Listen, wow. We talk a lot about oh, they, all they, that. They, they literally need a guy who can just score all the time and, and doesn't don't really play, have to play defense? defense. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, they have the, the guard and, next to me is gonna be six foot six at all times. My God. So I thought that was Gogo Batase. Yeah. I thought that was the worst thing about <laughs> Sunday. I thought the most devastating thing on Sunday was the Pelicans losing. Maybe oh we God. can argue. Oh. I mean, do you think it was worse? Um, also the, embarrassing. Well, so like the Timberwolves loss, I think was pretty bad because I think it's a pretty bad result to get end up with the Suns, a team that's handled you pretty well in the regular season. Like it's a for a team that was first for most of the season. Like yeah. the Timberwolves ending up with the Suns, so that was pretty bad. But I thought the Pelicans' loss was worse because they end up in the play-in, and it seemed like I feel like for most of the year maybe they were going to avoid the play-in, and not just that. I feel like the Pelicans have the not insignificant chance of getting totally screwed out of the playoffs. Like, yeah, I have been pretty adamant. Like the play-in is good for viewership, but I, I still been have been consistent. I think it stinks. For, for the teams involved. I think it stinks for the seven and eight seeds. I think it's too hard for the seven and eight seeds. They say yeah. like the seven seed has two chances to stay in or the eight seed even does. It's like, well, not really because like you look like the heat, the heat are the eight seed there. Are they seven games ahead of, of, of the bulls? Yeah. And so like the heat have to play at the Sixers who have Joel and bead. And so you're, you're supposed to lose that game. And then you have a one game playoff for your entire season against the team. You're seven games better than that doesn't seem fair to me. It should be harder to make the playoffs. In my opinion, if you're a nine or a 10 seed, but the Pelicans, they get destroyed by the Lakers. Now they have to play the Lakers again. Uh, The Lakers get the benefit of staying in new Orleans. So you're not even benefiting from the cross country travel of having a home game. You're like, Oh, well they're flying West to East. That'll help us. Um, And then if you lose that, so you have to, you have to play AD and LeBron, you lose that. You might have to face like Steph Curry and the warriors. And then if you lose that, you're out, your season's over for me. That's that was the biggest loser. I think uh, uh, of Sunday. So I don't know if you've seen the rest too, as the other guys. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but they're having a, they've got a bunch of tickets available in New Orleans. And mm. so there's a good chance it's going to be a Laker heavy crowd. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And uh, that's a disaster. If the Warriors win, I mean, the Warriors, I think, probably wind up beating the Pelicans. If it's the Kings, somehow, Pelicans are in good shape. Pelicans own the Kings. That's that, I think they wouldn't be, that wouldn't be an issue, but yeah. it's going to be tough for them. Yeah, Yeah, it's um, the other thing is it's uh, the Lakers are uniquely suited to survive a couple nights in New Orleans because their two best players are kind of old and aren't going to go out. And Austin Reeves is a gigantic dork who doesn't (laughs) go out like I'm no disrespect to him as a point. But like when they had those uh, Taylor Swift rumors about him, 
he laughed and said, well, I don't, I don't ever go out. I, I never visit a bar. He's he, so he's the Lakers are not the no New Orleans be able to take advantage yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they live in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like there is no, they must've gotten into LA last night. Right. Like they, um, it's funny how boring, I, and I mean this in a positive way, right? Like these guys are boring off the court. They're not doing yeah. anything but playing basketball. So that's Unfor- what you say, but it took the laser focus of the bubble to get them their only title. So yeah. I think maybe they are, uh, I, a Listen, little more distracted than we think. LeBron in does seem a little more interested in wine now. So oh, yeah. I don't know. He he might have a problem with that. I've seen him swilling. Uh, that <laughs> I mean, that's the only Redick. distraction. What if JJ Redick brings his podcast to New Orleans and they have to, that, yeah, that, that could be some off the court distractions. Dave, you make a good point about the tickets. I mean, this is just like, yeah, it's going to be a huge Lakers crowd. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's the same. I mean, like, it was probably going to be 50 50 anyway, but still right. like, I mean, Pelicans, one of the softest markets fan wise, like I, I I'd say same with Memphis, like the Grizzlies, yeah. one of the softest markets, the Grizzlies, like John Morant was mad that the Friday night game where Scott wall threw it for the Lakers, um, mm-hmm. that it, the crowd was so <laughs> pro Lakers. It's like, um, first of all, uh, you guys have 13 rostered players out. <laughs> So, like, you can't be mad at the Grizzlies fans for yeah. one not showing up. Even if you're healthy, there's going to be a very large Laker contingent at these home games. Yeah, I mean, these like, these are temps. I saw I, John Morant like liked a tweet where someone was like, "Hey, season ticket holders, don't sell your tickets to Lakers fans." It's like, first of all, let's be real. If the team wants to buy the tickets back from the season ticket holders and pass them out to Grizzlies fans, yes, that's a great plan. Do that yeah. by all means. But like asking the people who bought tickets to see uh, Jordan Goodwin uh, take on LeBron to be like, hey, but you can't cheer for LeBron. It's like, come on. Yeah. Um, Listen, if if fans don't want opposing fans in the arena, there's a way to do it, right? You buy all the tickets. You buy the tickets, yeah. And you cause riots like they do in Europe. Yeah, so you get home fans only in these. I mean, smuggle in, you in. in the flares. Uh, Partisan Red signs. Star. Yeah. Partisan Red Star. They do a home and home. There's no away fans allowed in the arena. <laughs> they have riot cops outside. They literally, literally, like you, you're in deep trouble if you're. Well, that's the, that's, that's the new like. L.A. Clippers <laughs> fan wall is gonna be right, uh-huh. yeah. where you can't yeah. have the opposing team's colors on. No, if John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., Marcus Smart, Luke Kennard, they wanted to pool their money and buy every ticket, giving it away to Grizzlies fans, do it. Yeah. That should they should do it. And then I I think they would do that, and then some of those Grizzlies fans would be like. Oh, this Laker fan wants to buy this on uh, SeatGeek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Great. How much? Um, so I thought the Pelicans was a really big loser from the, the final game of the season. Um, similarly, the Magic, I thought were maybe the biggest winner because I had the similar worry for the Magic. The Magic could have ended up in the play-in, and then you then you're looking at oh they might have to play the Heat and the Sixers or something. Yeah. yeah. And or, then their oh, season, right, yeah. their season, like they're playing the bucks on the final day and the bucks have something to play for. And mm-hmm. the magic had lost the previous, I think three games. Um, and the magic were all of a sudden being like, we're going to have home court advantage. We're going to have home court advantage. We might have home court advantage to being like, possibly there was this Avenue. I can see where they're going to slide all the way out of the playoffs and the bucks mm-hmm. got off to a strong start. And I'm like, come on magic. It's been such a good story all year. Yeah. But then, I don't know what it was. I mean, they tidal waved, absolutely broke the Bucks, destroyed them. So uh, I well, thought that's I was... why you bring in Damian Lillard, you know. Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I think Orlando had an outside chance at the two seed. Yeah. Maybe a week ago. Yeah, yeah like two days, like on Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally because th- they were playing all the teams they needed to play, but then they kept losing. They kept yeah. losing. And now I'm like, wait, are they going to have to play the Sixers first round yeah. and then have to play the heat and like the yeah. loser game. And I was like, that's so unfair for Paolo Bencaro. Who's been so good. Um, but no, they, they, yeah, they annihilated the, uh, the bucks. Dave, you mentioned Damian Lillard. Um, yeah. We'll hear, we'll hear more about him in the awards segment of the program is, uh, is th- I have ahead. a thought, you know, is, is this a thing? You guys tell me that I'm stealing a bit from the Magic's broadcast. Um, is this a thing? Damian Lillard's team for the fifth straight year finished with a worse record than Mike Conley's team. Also, Damian Lillard has had a worse record than Mike Conley uh, in eight of his 12 seasons in the NBA. Yeah, that's a thing. 
That's, that's a, a thing. Feels like a thing. It's a thing. Listen, I, I it's, will, it's hard to build around a player as good as Damian Lillard, okay? It is. Oh, it must, it Conley, must, be, must be hard to find the right pieces to go around Damian Lillard. And Con, say, Con is a perfect piece to go with other guys, right? Like, yeah. so he's going to be on better teams. Yeah. What were you going to say, Sean? I was just going to say that uh, there was there was a – I was listening to a different podcast that talked about how the playoffs were Damian Lillard's time. Mm. And I I – Found that dubious. Also, if you look at uh, any of Dame Lillard's like playoff stats pre bubble, uh, are worse than the equivalent Kyle Lowry stats at the time. Ooh. He was considered a real playoff choker, and I mean he has had he has had some big series. I mean, obviously the t- the two buzzer beaters, series buzzer ending beaters. buzzer beaters, walk off series enders. I mean, also yeah. great plays. He's a fantastic player. Fantastic well, player. Mm-hmm. But the just, just like I, I feel like the playoff reputation is a little bit unearned because a lot of it has come in. Hasn't like, made a finals. A lot, well, he's he's made one conference finals, and like even those times he's advanced, it's been, you know, everyone on the Clippers got hurt. Well, the conference and finals they, was was much like Mike Conley's conference finals. It was very injury aided. They were not one of the two best teams in the West. Neither the Grizzlies back when Conley made it or the Blazers when the Blazers made the conference finals. I I will say I saw Mike Conley in a playoff series play with a broken face. Oh, he was pretty good. And I saw Dame Lillard exit a series after winning a bubble MVP because he kind of didn't want to be on the floor when the Blazers got swept by the Lakers. Also, Mike Conley has a large collection of horrible game sevens in the playoffs. Oh, I will definitely take Dame Lillard in a deciding playoff game. Oh, much yeah. better than Mike Conley. Mike Conley had that potential series winning shot against yeah. was it yeah. the nuggets. Yeah, I think. And yeah, that, that wasn't great. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't awesome. Um, anyways, uh, where's Damon Damian Lillard playing next year? Um, not on team USA. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Team USA announced their dream team for the Paris Olympics. Uh, Damian Lillard was not one of the names included. Here are the 11 names of the players Team USA has chosen. Some are saying it's the greatest American team ever, better than the dream team. Definitely the oldest, right? Yeah. Um, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, Bam Adebayo, and Therese Halliburton. Who's your starters? Who's your starters here? You got Ant? I mean. You got to start LeBron. Paul George? Paul George on the list? Paul George not on the list. There's an empty space. There's one spot left. Paul George has got to sign that deal, and then I think he could be on the team. According to an athletic poll uh, last summer, two summers ago, I can't remember, Jaron Jackson Jr. was the best player in uh, training camp for Team USA. I'm just throwing that out. Just throwing that out. They have – their bigs are Davis, Embiid, and Bam. Yeah. Clearly, they're – that's like – normally, they go way smaller. I mean, LeBron LeBron is – International LeBron four. Is, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's LeBron's internet. perfect. Yeah. I mean, he's perfect for it. I no, mean, he's perfect. I yeah. do feel like they need another big slash wing. They need someone who loves rebounding. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's not really um bam. I, I mean, mean, bam, I would say bam I mean, loves rebounding. A good international player. Yeah, the, maybe the, maybe like a thick four they could they could add. I, I yeah. do think I think between Bam and and AD and Embiid and LeBron, they've got a pretty good That's four man group four. there. Yep. You could play big, big, right? Like they could play mm. AD, Embiid, and LeBron. They could really do that. Like yeah. international basketball. That honestly be- sounds amazing. Yeah, and sounds and we would crush because I mean, what's the thing is the thing that that killed us in the World Cup was the lack of of toughness inside and rebounding right like um yeah. that would that would immediately solve that problem and then you've got i don't know kevin durant as your two well that's and, so so that's, that's kind of where i'm at um a like basketball team that, that you could put on the court so steph we're saying steph katie lebron ad Embiid. is that our i would, I would lean i would think about that yeah they have gone steve kerr or i don't know who's in charge now he's still coaching steve yeah. kerr's still coaching yeah they in the world championships, they refused to play big. Yeah. Refused. 
That was the thing. The toughness inside, they only played one big. It would be the, it just Jaron as the five sometimes, and then just yeah. Bam at the time. It does feel like, I mean, with Embiid shooting, you can have them. Yeah, like I love 100%. your it, Embiid and Anthony Davis together, but yeah. like I'm telling you right now, they're not going to do it. Like it, it no, makes it, it makes too much sense. There's no way well, Steve Kerr does that. When he gets scared, he goes small. That's what he that's what he does. Anytime the Warriors are behind, they, they go small. That's his button. If we get LeBron at the five, KD at the four, I would I I I would love to see that. No, that, like that I mean, would actually t- be for me Tatum, as a basketball nerd, I would die to see it. Tatum at the three with that, like yeah. a, like a Tatum at the three, Durant at the four, Bill LeBron Curry, at the five Booker, would be awesome. Tatum, Durant, yeah. uh, LeBron, and just absolutely. I mean, that's that's gonna like 180 offensive rating. Yeah, I mean the good the the interesting about the interesting thing about this team obviously all incredible players is trying to imagine if Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum and Devin Booker, maybe assume the role of just, Hey, we're, we're the defensive stoppers on this team. Cause those guys can do it. Yeah. Those guys are awesome individual defensive players. Um, and so like, I, I, I would be excited to see those guys be like, Hey, you don't even need my points. I'm just going to try to be, you know, Kobe slash Tony Allen slash whoever I'm going to try to be the guy who, who, who plays really hard defense to, to carry this team. Um, but yeah, seriously, he's going to get some minutes for that reason. Basically. I mean, I, I think he's a great, he's a great glue guy for this team. And mm-hmm. he is notably the only glue guy on the team. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's the only like connective piece on the team. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. What do you guys think about Embiid scamming France out of a passport though? where he uh he got a passport because oh, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, we want you to be on our team, the international team. And he's like, uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Sure he was able to get a passport anyway. Possibly. I think he was, I think he was but, able. But he, uh, yeah. Colonialism's I mean, tricky. It was a pretty good one there, I think, for him. And it's all the connections of Embiid to France are like a little bit vague. Like he has some relatives there. No, they're ve- they're very it. nothing. Yeah. It's, when you when you hear about it, French. it's like he liked Arsenal in like the early 2000s. <laughs> and they had Thierry Henry. Like, Is that Thierry Henry? Yeah, yeah, and they right, had there a we bunch go. Of French guys. Yeah, that yeah. works. That works. Yeah. That works like, for That's me. It. That's enough. Um, also, hey, let's, let's be French. honest. Yeah, I, I, this gives us a better uh, like basketball situation. Anyway, um, I was yeah. originally Who? rooting for Embiid to play for France, but Wemby and Rudy Gobert as your twin towers in France doesn't happen good. if Embiid's there. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is is the Embiid uh Anthony Davis front court enough to stop Daniel Tice and Dennis Schroeder yeah. pick and rolls? Yeah. They they couldn't do it last they time. They couldn't do it last time. Um we'll see. Uh here's here's one more thing before we get to uh, talking about who we think are going to win some of these playoff series. Um this year, this NBA season that obviously wrapped up on Sunday. Um, this season where the NBA introduced the 65 game rule, the player participation policy, um, there were more player games lost to injury this year. The most player games lost to injury since 2005. The conclusion is load management and or the reduction of back to backs is harmful to NBA players. Is my conclusion. Uh, am I close? I feel like that says accurate as the study that uh <laughs> the joe dumar study joe dumar yeah, yeah, i've got yeah, one yeah. i got a study yeah. back here guys yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of bizarre and also it feels like um they're they might have ruined tyrese halliburton's career in forcing him to uh rush back from a hamstring injury or forfeit 40 million dollars he still feels, that felt like a weird aspect of it, but yeah. I, I, I'm hopeful Halliburton has bounced back. He seems a little sprier recently. He was good enough to uh, beat Trey Young by forty something <laughs> on on Sunday. Here's one of the here's one of the things that I haven't heard mentioned about the whole Tyrese Halliburton trying to make an All NBA team, so he ends up with the Supermax, ends up with forty million dollars more over the lifetime of his contract. The one thing that no one ever mentions is um, perhaps Halliburton is not a Supermax level player. (laughs) Like the Supermax, I understand how it works. And I understand if you hit a certain level, 
Like if you hit a certain level, everyone gets a super max. If you qualify for the super max, everyone gets the super max that qualifies for the super max. But let's be real. I think when they came up with the super max, it was to better compensate the actual stars of the game. Like, like LeBron James is wildly underpaid. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like all these guys who get, it's just like how basically everyone gets a max extension. And it's really weird where it's like, why did that player get a max extension? Halliburton was deemed a star. Like they just decided. Mm -hmm. But it just, it just well, happens. It the NC, it's the end season tournament. That's, That's where right. Stars are made. Well, it's like you go back to John Morant. We're like John Morant. He missed out on the super max because of getting suspended and off the, off the court stuff. But even if he hadn't, if he made like, maybe you could argue John Morant because of his, he's a draw. Maybe like he actually is more of a star. He's a social oh, media yeah. star. But like when we talk about, is he one of the six best players in the NBA or eight best players in the NBA? It's like, ah, uh, not, he finished, I think sixth in MVP like uh, yeah. two years ago, he's, but like, okay, but there's so many super max slots. That's the yeah, thing. There it's are, like, but, as I, but I'm know. saying, wouldn't the league, wouldn't the league be a little bit better if they actually were more judicious? Like teams wish they could be more judicious. You just uh, can't because you have to retain your an, players. If it was so you mean max. if there was a sliding salary scale that actually like <laughs> depended on your production? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like industrial labor is, uh, yeah. is is treated. Yeah, that would be interesting, Keith. Like, okay, so you have this season like this year, like Luka Doncic is that's a yeah. supermax. Yeah, he's yeah. a supermax right. player. Yeah, but uh, Halliburton, when you consider the entire uh, the entire season, that's more of like um. I don't yeah. know. Well, it's, it's like contract it's like he has. Basically. It's like Jalen you know Brunson, I mean? like, like five years, two hundred million. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's yeah, like like Jalen Brunson is high, on the cusp. But... Like Jalen Brunson is going to probably finish second team All NBA, and like, oh, yeah. some people you could argue he gets the fifth super max. spot, Why but like, well, you're like, oh, yeah. super max. You're like, well, no, he's not a top. It's not a top fifteen the player. They bring in the guy yeah. they bring in to be the number one for the Knicks should get the super max, and Jalen yeah. Brunson just gets the regular max, the baby max, yeah, if you will, the, the baby max contract that's worth sixty million dollars. There's so many of these extensions where you're like, like Jalen Brown is going to make what sixty five million dollars yeah. or something. Yeah, he qualified. Well, Tatum is going to be the highest paid player with his extension, but, but yeah, like, it'll be it'll be sixty a year. Okay. Like Lamelo Ball missed out on the super max, and you're like, well. Yeah, it it's would be like, it, sense. it would be max. it would be crushing <laughs> to that franchise if he got oh the super God. max. Like, it not everyone should get this thing, but I know the again the way the salary system is, you just pay out everybody, and right. you, you kind of have to. And it's like, oh yeah, Mike Conley earned the max. Do you remember last summer yeah. when Jalen Brown signed, and we all had to act surprised for three days? Wow, I can't believe he got this. Much. Well, we knew for months as long yeah. as he checked the boxes. You know, it's. Um, you know, I wish other, it was that easy for us. No. The other aspect of it is just that the whole idea is that it helps you uh, keep your keep your players, player. right? Right. Keep your right. Players. But it doesn't stop a guy. I mean, how many years did Lillard have when he demanded the trade? Four, four years left on that deal. Has oh yeah, his hadn't even kicked in yet, right? <laughs> Extension hadn't kicked in. It's incredible. Well, that's the next thing. If you take the supermax, you can't leave. Like yeah, that. That should be it. Yeah, you're you're tied. For well, like but, that, that, but see, here's the thing the only way to actually enforce that is that the team then can't also trade you, yeah, which I would be into, yeah, that would be good. It's like it's if a you real give marriage. a super max, yeah. you can't trade, like you are stuck on this. If, if it's yeah. a five year deal, you're stuck for three, and that reminds me, we gotta, we, we gotta get rid of no fault divorces, you gotta yeah. show cause, man. If you want to leave your spouse, hey, you want to get the bonuses of marriage. that's a bad thing, yeah. yeah. If you want to get those I, like, tax listen, breaks. Here's my thing. I'm anti I'm anti draft because I think these guys should have uh, at least the, the ability to negotiate a little bit with teams and and feel it out. Um I think the draft is maybe like the best solution for for this sort of competitive situation. Um I I'm pro free agency. But once you sign the contract, like you should have to live by it a little bit. I, and it's good for the league, it's good for fans. Yeah, I mean, th this thing like the NBA has had a real problem like this, this thing where the, the guys sign the contract and ask out, turn people off quite a bit. Yep. And I, I do think that if you if you added a stipulation where you're stuck a little bit, three years or whatever it is, maybe it should be the whole term. What they really need is some guy to decide to decide he, he wants out, but he doesn't want to go to L.A., New York, 
or Miami. He's you know what I mean? We guy. need uh, we need a brave superstar to demand a trade on a supermax to the Indiana Pacers. Austin you know? Reeves is going to demand a trade to the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, exactly. And the league is going to force. He wants Memphis to get. To he it. wants to come back close to Arkansas where he grew up. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, hey, you're going to have to give up Jaron Jackson. But all right, we got <laughs> we we got destroyed. Not a supermax player. Um, signed to one of the cheapest deals for his production, maybe in the NBA. By the way, in, in 2019, Clay Thompson missed a uh, third team NBA by uh, a very small number of votes. Yeah. And I was just imagining, like, that would have been the worst NBA contract. He would, yeah, would have been a Supermax. A Supermax. But what you, you, they couldn't, you, can you even pay your own guys? They, I guess they only had Steph as a Supermax. Cause that was the other weird yeah. thing where, where they couldn't, the Celtics couldn't trade for 80 back in the day. Um, anyways, right, right. we've gotten distracted. Let's uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and run through all of the playoff matchups. All right, the play-in kicks off on Tuesday night with the Western Conference. Pelicans and Lakers uh, are the first game. The winner gets to play the Nuggets. I kind of feel like this is I I thought. The line I'm seeing is just Lakers by one. I kind of feel like this is the Pelicans get them back from Sunday. Um, but like, it's also hard to bet. Ag- Here's the two things it's hard to bet against LeBron in a single elimination game. And also Jonas Valanciunas in the play in who is essentially unstoppable historically. What do you guys think is going to happen in this game on Tuesday between the Kings and the Lakers? Sean, what, what do you, what do you think is going down? So it's really weird that the spread is that low, but we have two, we have an unstoppable force and an immovable object here. The mm. immovable object is Jonas Valanciunas in a playing game. The unstoppable force is LeBron James against Jonas Valanciunas, <laughs> not in the regular season. Uh, JB is 0-10 against LeBron, and it's only 0-10 because he was hurt for two of the games Wow! Uh, when Toronto was getting swept by the Cavs. I so I, I that's, just, that's the stat of stats. Wow. Yeah, He's going to play so three just, minutes, though. What's that? He's only going to play like three. Oh, yeah, you're right. He you're right. he is he is by far the all time leading rebounder in play in history. Yeah. Um, Swing has, the, has the most experience of anyone alive in the play in. I believe he's had five games in the play in. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a small but very vocal contingent of um, Valanciunas super fans that I'm exposed to. <laughs> oh yeah. Head. And they were horrified that Willie Green pulled one of my, JV yeah. in this in this game. But he had, I think he had four fouls and, and four turnovers in seven minutes of that game. And it's kind of like, yeah, you you really can't keep him on the court then. No matter I, what's happening with the Lakers. Drive. My, yeah. my controversial take is the Lakers are a team you can play Jonas Valanciunas against. Like, I, I think it's I think it's fine. I mean, it might not be ideal, but like, it it's depends. fine. He can he can normally eat in those situations. I, I feel like, I don't know. The Are chance. you saying he's a better choice than Cody Zeller, who also got <laughs> some decent minutes in there? I think that's that's a defensible take. I mean, if Zion plays like he played on Sunday and like he's played like he played in the play in against the Lakers, mm-hmm. where he just looks lost out there, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's going to matter. Dave, um, Lakers only favored by one. It seems like they'd be favored by more. And you even spelled out the the crowd, the Smoothie King crowd, is going to be pro LA. I might get on some of that action. But do you do you think the Lakers take care of business? I think, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, it just, again, LeBron single elimination. Um, he's going to play 40 minutes. Yep. That, that dude shows up too. Um, yeah. So that, and it, as long as AD's back, it's not a real issue, you know? Oh, um, he, yeah. he's actually That's, questionable. Like he has been for basically every game this entire year. Yeah. Well, um, he had, he had like, he got pushed in the air the other night. Like it actually, yeah. it, you could see where he kind of tweaked it. Um, I, I just, as long as he's healthy, I, I just think that they're, they're more well suited for one game. If it was a seven game series, I, I think that the Pels have a great coaching staff. Uh, I think you you give them a good shot uh, to beat the Lakers in a in a series. But one game, man, I just don't see how you beat LeBron. So the nine ten game is uh, Sean, your Warriors. Yes, they're the road team against the Kings. However, everyone thinks the Warriors are going to win. They're only two and a half point favorites. Um, how do the Warriors find a way to lose this one? You know, uh, the easy answer is early Draymond Green ejection. Um, how, how does Draymond, I'm sorry, don't let me cut you off. How does, how does Draymond 
resist the urge to stomp on D- Demonis Sabonis' chest cavity in this game? I think it's because he's going to flagrant foul Harrison Barnes before he gets a chance. Uh, yeah. There's weirdly a ton of tension between Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green. And there's like a, a few factors. One is that uh, Barnes got picked in the lottery the year the Warriors got Draymond in the second round. And um, I, I think Harrison Barnes is also a guy who was did like an internship program at Facebook. Um, he's married to a political journalist. Uh, I can see how they might have different well, he had a Vibes, trademark a little nickname bit. before the he Black got Falcon, yes. his, uh, to college. So, yeah, uh-huh. he's done like he did a weird schoolhouse rock voting video. Um, but uh, Barnes blamed Draymond Green for him essentially being exiled to the Dallas Mavericks when they got Kevin Durant because Draymond Green had specifically recruited him. Not that he was the only guy on the Warriors doing that. Like Andre Iguodala was trying to attach himself to Kevin Durant like six years earlier. I don't know. Um, But apparently every guy who used to be on the, you know, 2013 to 2016 Warriors was invited into Harrison Barnes's wedding, except Draymond Green. So Mm. there is a few. And Harrison Barnes did go for like 38 points against the Warriors this year in what has not been a super strong season otherwise. So that's the guy I I think you want to watch is I, I like that weirdly that. resents Harrison Barnes because of, you know, I mean, Harrison Barnes got married like six or seven years ago and Draymond Green still keeps bringing it up that he wasn't invited. So. I uh, understand yeah. leaving Draymond Green off of a wedding guest list. I mean, yeah, but also we just yelled at him all the time when they were teammates. So yeah, I, I get it too. Um, but but yeah, the the whole like Warriors are better on the road thing this year is mostly because Draymond's suspension covered more home games. They're not really any different <laughs> statistically. They just uh it's like extra disappointing when they're at home, but I don't really feel like the the only thing is that um Sacramento, while they have great fans, there's going to be a lot of Warriors fans there because uh, they, they are really jacking up the team. Vivek Ranadive, right? Yeah, <laughs> Vivek's an old owner. They've got Barbosa on the coaching staff. Uh-huh. And they stole the Oakland A's. And uh, it's, a, it's a real <laughs> collection of uh, two cities that have stolen professional sports teams from the city of Oakland. So, Dave, it I can imagine how it looks like, honestly, for a 10 seed, even a 46 win 10 seed that the Warriors are, honestly, their path going forward, not that daunting relatively to what it could be. What's what's your opinion on the Warriors actual path or like this? How good could they actually do like theoretically playing the Kings, then possibly playing the Pelicans on the road and then possibly facing the Thunder in the first round? Like that's not that daunting if you they, are if you are Steph Curry and Draymond Green that's a like if you had to pick a path as a 10 seed honestly that's probably the path you would have chosen mm-hmm. maybe you wanted to maybe you'd prefer to play the Timberwolves or something as a one seed but like no, do you I think, think they, they probably they could, would want the yeah. Thunder I think if you if you asked them and they were able to be honest just because they match up better size wise you know, Minnesota can just outbig them in a way that the Warriors can't handle. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that Denver is we that's a known problem for everybody. There's a path to the conference finals for the Warriors. Um, if they were any good. Yeah, but, but I think not. they stink. Yeah, they're okay. kind of bad. Yeah, they're kind of I mean, bad. This is still this is still like if they could if they could go Kings, Pelicans, Thunder. Mavericks or Clippers or Clippers. Like, yeah. Like all of that is. I mean, I think, but, I they, think, but can they beat the Kings? That, in that's, one the game, real, that's the real thing. Like they might, they might lose. They this game by the Kings. I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to wager on the Kings just out of the, I'm sure all the money's on the Warriors. Um, yeah. We'll yeah. see. Um, let's, let's run through the How whole many free s- throws. Is Steph Curry shooting tonight? Three. He doesn't shoot free throws anymore. Right. <laughs> You know, he, you know, it's become this big narrative. And unfortunately, I'm always locked into the Warriors broadcast. Uh, it's Ooh. become this narrative. And a lot of uh, 
with the where the announcers is talking about how he can't get fouled, then they'll sometimes show a replay and it's pretty incidental contact. It's like it's just kind of the thing that the NBA stopped calling after the All Star break, and you look and you're kind of like, he should have just made that layup. Like he's, yeah. I think he's doing a little bit of foul seeking that he had not done as much, and some of he's that's bad like, at he's it. Not as good at finishing, but yeah, he doesn't have. He does like when he does the head snap, he kind of doesn't time it right, you know, and uh, he'll throw his hands up in a weird way. And you're kind of like, you got hit in the hip. That's like a guy who laughs every time he lies. Do you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. so bad at grifting. <laughs> and I hate it when he does it because, like, he's the best shooter to ever live. You don't yeah. need to grift. Um, he's really bad at seeking fouls. His finishing has dropped off quite a bit in the last mm-hmm. two seasons. Like, he's, he, I don't know. The wrist thing this year, I think, was an issue. But also, remember, he tweaked his ankle. Um, That has all, like, we've seen that this whole second half of the season, I think, where it looks like he's slipped a little bit. I mean, I I still think he's a top-tier guy, but I don't have him in, like, the top three anymore, you know? And and they just don't have enough talent around him for what he does now, right? Uh, Can Kuminga give him 20 points? You know? uh, Usually. Yeah, but that's what they need. No, yeah, um, they need somebody else to be scoring in the second and third quarters. Clay so needs can, Clay needs to score. You know, like they they need they need somebody who's not just Steph Curry to put up points. So yeah, because the Kings are going to put up a bunch of points. Can they borrow Jordan Poole? Yeah. <laughs> Which team needs Jordan Poole more? Kings or well, Warriors? Put that's up a, points for the Kings. Yeah. 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 Um, in the Eastern Conference. I don't really want to mention Hawks Bulls, except for the fact I'm so interested to watch this game. I'm like for, really for whatever <laughs> reason, compelling. The Hawks, like Trey Young came back. They gave up 157 points on Sunday. They decided not to sign Vete Kreji, who is this guy who was playing a lot of minutes for them, but he's on a two-way contract. And they didn't want to waive Trent Forrest, which I, I get. Like, if you believe in a guy going forward after this year. Yeah. You're not going to cut him just to play the Bulls in the play in. Um, I feel he like the Hawks really was playing 30 minutes a game. <laughs> yeah. I had him in my, the eye shop negative fantasy league. The guy was a rock star. Um, but yeah, that game, I mean, what a weird matchup of two going nowhere franchises. Um, but then you have the Sixers heat. Well, wait, 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 wait. What? We got to talk about the Bulls. We Why? have to talk about the Bulls. The Bulls are the team that everyone should be rooting for here. Yeah. Because they, instead of pulling the plug, yeah, they tried. This team tried hard through the last day against the Knicks when they didn't have anything to play for. Yeah, yeah, they kept playing hard. And I mean, when you when you look at what the Cavs did on Sunday and compare it to what the Bulls did, the Bulls at least have heart. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, as a sports guy, that's what I care about. Now the Hawks, I don't think so. Bulls. Tons of heart. I don't know why my voice cracked there. I'm very excited about the You're Bulls. getting emotional, and I love it. Tons of heart in the Bulls. I, I mean, Alex Caruso makes game-changing plays on the defensive end. Yeah. Um, I'm rooting for the Bulls to not only win this game, rooting for the Bulls to be the eighth seed and, and come out of the play-in. We got to – Yeah. That is good karma for a sport that needs it. They tried hard all year. Also, you know, uh, I thought that Billy Donovan was going to leave and he didn't. So uh, I'm rooting for him to (laughs) get out of the play. I kind of, I got it. I was looking at that because I I thought he was a potential Kentucky coach. And then I saw how long he's been in the NBA. You're not going back to college after that. You're not like, no, he's been in, he's been in the real thing. He's not, he's not going to go in. He doesn't want to like sweet talk a 16 year old into, come into Lexington, Kentucky. He wants to just deal with adults. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm I'm with you, Dave, where I, I'm, I'm cheering for the Bulls. Uh, you tried hard. Let's uh, let, let, let's see maybe that payoff with a, with a four-game sweep to the Celtics. Uh, uh, hang on one second. Here, team, here's a good oh, stat, sorry. by the yeah. way, from Seth yeah. Part now. Oh, yeah. Um, even after they lost in overtime the other day, the Bulls are the best relative to expectation clutch team uh, of the tracking data era. So since 2013, 2014, they, they literally had the best relative to expectation clutch performance of any team, even over the 73 win warriors. That's amazing. Well, so here's, they're going to give us a yeah. good game. Well, and I have, I have one stat for you in the NBA's clutch tracking stats. So that's close and late within, you know, close and late. 
Uh, Alex Caruso has the most steals in the league with 12. Closest uh, other player has six. Like it's not, you're not the, I need, I need a, wrong. I need a per minute game thing overtime, here, Sean. What's that? I need a per minute. You can't give me clutch tat stats totals. It's, oh, well, Cause geez. we don't know who's playing more like Caruso. The, the clutch bulls have played all these clutch games. Right. I mean, they're like seven. Caruso's awesome. I'm fine with your stat. I just need a little more. Well, they're, they're like seventh. In Caruso, Caruso took that Hawks game. To overtime. Warriors are speaking one. of uh, yes. speaking of, of not quitting on the year, final game of the year, that overtime game, Dante DiVincenzo played 53 minutes in that game, which tips, is incredible stuff. Tips, well, he's going to have man. a week off and he's like, all right, let me get some extra work in. You know, so, Josh Hart during that string of uh, games where he was just playing like 57, 48 minutes a game. Uh, one of those games, he did a uh, sponsored Peloton ride workout in between games. <laughs> like he wasn't getting enough cardio. Play That's for awesome. Tibbs. He's so in the audience like, hey. So once we have our matchup set, or at least once we know who's going to be um, and uh, once the, the all the seven, eight guys have played, I'm going to be launching our Stone Cold Locks playoff challenge for the Patreon supporters where you get to pick who you think is going to win um, each first run series and how many games you think that series is going to go. So let's let's real quick do our predictions, even though we don't know the seven and eight in each conference. Let's start with the known quantities. Bucks Pacers three six matchup. It's come out that um, Giannis is going to miss a little bit of this series. Who do you think wins Bucks Pacers? And in how many games does the series go? Dave, why don't you go first? Man, we, we've been talking about karma a lot, and and the basketball gods and the way things kind of work out. Feels like the Pacers might steal this thing, right? Like, I mean, it's a momentum thing. It's a vibes thing. And this team is different. They, Pascal Siakam has been a game changer for them. Um, it, it gives you a guy who, if Giannis does play, he can help on Giannis quite a bit. I still think the Bucks should win. But the Carlisle versus Doc Rivers coaching battle. It's a big one. Uh, Damian Lillard's going to be trying to guard Tyrese Halliburton, who we, you know, we decided not a deserving Supermax guy. Um, but he's going <laughs> to have to try to guard him. Uh, I don't know, guys. Pacers in seven. Pacers in seven. What do you think, Sean? I'm also picking Pacers in seven. They kind of owned them in the regular season. And the way this has gone for Milwaukee, I feel like it could only be a blown 3-2 series lead that they yeah. lose at home. Yeah. Wow. And Ooh, maybe maybe wait. Giannis is a little banged up. But yeah, I think, I think the Sixers, I think the Pacers – Take game six easily at home and then win a close game seven. At home. You sure it's not Pacers and six? What if it's Pacers and six? Pacers That's and six so Pacers. Incredible. I'm just, I just think the Doc Rivers. I experience am just getting carried away. Gives you hope and three then, one. Yeah. So I was going to say Pacers and six before you guys started. You guys <laughs> both picked the Pacers. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I don't know. I don't like, really are the, Bucks, are the Bucks really going to lose in the first round again? Without They've Giannis, before listen, without Giannis, I, I just do not trust. Well, they're gonna lose Don't the first him. game, right? Without right. Giannis, right. yeah. Although the Pacers have not been convincing recently, yeah. I just think Siakam's the kind of he kind of has done well against the Bucks in the playoffs in the past, and just oh. in general is sort of a guy that they struggle with because he's uh strong and tall uh i mean that <laughs> but but really i just think the bucks have a couple of guys who just might not have it anymore you know chris Middleton is really important to their team and you know he he's good every other game and i just i don't know if brooke lopez is really going to be that effective against the pacers because he hasn't been basically like the the previous games they've played are just full of Guys on the perimeter blowing past Lillard or Malik Beasley. And then Brooke Lopez is either in drop coverage and a guy shoots a floater over him or he comes up and they go around him as well. And instead and, of Giannis playing with Brooke, it's going to be Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis. Or a large I don't practice. know if Patrick Beverly really changes that equation. He's well, what's old. amazing? <laughs> what's amazing is when they added Beverly back to the starting lineup, it made such a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, that I lost all faith in the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> I am. I guess I'm going to I'm I'm going to go Bucks and six. I think like I'm getting too carried away. I feel like if I if I'd seen the Pacers be more 
better. If I'd seen them be better recently, I'd have more faith, but like, I don't have that much faith. This is a team where we were like, man, they really missed Buddy Healed. Like, I feel like we said that a week ago. Well, they missed and the shooting. They trade Buddy Healed anyway. They got I know, but so I don't, I don't, I don't know. Correct. I still feel like out. this is, I, I'm not, I'm not finding an updated series line for this. Like, the Bucks are pretty significant favorites, like minus 250 favorites for the series, but this is before that it came out officially that Giannis is not going to be available for early in the series. Like, I think. Like it's possible Giannis has compromised the whole series. So like, mm-hmm. nah, screw it. I'm they going never did I'm release sticking with Pacers and six. Right? They that. never did release a grade on this hamstring or no, this uh, calf strain, right? So um, if he's going to miss the first two games, it, it leads me to believe he probably should maybe miss the whole series, right? Well, like I'm, it, I'm starting to get nervous about <laughs> um, Giannis coming back too early yeah that 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 injury report was not encouraging because all it said was his achilles tendon is intact which just means not snapped all right so like, that doesn't mean like uninjured i like it intact. We're, we're all going yeah. pacers great love yeah. it um Cavs magic dave you said, said earlier you're sticking with it you got the magic, magic in five I, i'm saying <laughs> they are going to embarrass the embarrassing cleveland cavaliers and, and i don't say this about the players man it's it's a bummer to me that they tank their way uh in in the final day against one of the worst teams in the league man it was embarrassing and i i hope orlando gives it to him orlando has a great coach jamal mosley really can coach that defense is excellent and they they hung 113 on the bucks the other day yep like they can score a little bit if they need to i don't i don't i don't, tr- I don't trust that sticking around sean what, what do you think about this series you know, even having watched the Magic be unimpressive recently, I think the organizational vibe with the Cavs is so bad because essentially what they were saying with their actions on Sunday is that they traded Larry Markkinen, three first-round picks or whatever, for Donovan Mitchell in hopes of winning one first-round series in two years. And that's like, that is some loser mentality. But also, as much as I hate to admit it, uh the Magic, when they play Jonathan Isaac at center, mm. are a fearsome team because Paolo's basically passing well enough now that they can kind of get away with Jalen Suggs just being a great defender but not really that much of an offensive initiator. And, uh, you know, Isaac gives him, I think, a little bit – I mean, he, he was guarding Embiid really well. He's just – uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to eat my words and probably give a fast break apology and maybe buy some of his customized anti-vaccine don't trust the government uh Christian <laughs> apparel. Is he selling his own Bibles yet? I don't I have not looked at the site recently, but uh I mean the, the clothes do look pretty comfortable, they're just a little bit pricey and <laughs> He's selling robes. Embarrassing to wear. Uh, but so, it's a lot of athleisure. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> what, so what's what's your pick, Sean? Oh, sorry. Uh, magic in six. You guys I'm are both picking the six. magic. Yes. Yeah. Purely, purely because the Cavs were a bunch of losers. Yes. No, I mean, I think. I mean, I just, I just think they. Um, I just think they've been better for about three months. I, I. It's a four or five. You know, it's, it's a four yeah, or five. Uh, the Magic are not. They're not big underdogs. Um. It's like I see Cavs minus one sixty, minus one eighty, couple places. Uh, I I can't see the Magic getting over the hump and actually getting a playoff series win. I do wonder if they've saved Jonathan Isaac just for the playoffs because like he has been kind of cool and he's been awesome when he plays. Um, but I just don't think the offense is going to be there. Like I love Jalen Suggs, but like I think they're just really gonna they're gonna struggle. And the Cavs, as much as they've been way up and down, like the Cavs can defend. And like, I think if you just turn the ball over to Donovan Mitchell, he should be able to do enough. I'm going to say Cavs close it out on the road, though. I'm going to say Cavs in six uh, for that series. Um, The Knicks are going to face either the Heat or the Sixers. Are they going to survive? What do you think, Dave? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Probably. The Heat, man, it's a weird year. Like, is Jimmy Butler, does he still have it? Doesn't seem to, but. And I think that that's kind of, that's. It's kind of what, how I feel about the Heat. I, I don't know if they have it. Yeah. Bam was excellent this year, but they they just didn't. This might be the year that they ran out of guys. Like, they just didn't find anyone this season, right? Like, the, yeah. the, the surprise of the Miami Heat is 
you know, uh, we, we didn't find out three new guys that are good at basketball. I mean, Caleb Martin could always turn back into a superhero. I mean, I so. Jaime Jaquez, they found it and then he disappeared. Uh-huh. Well, he hit the rookie wall. I still yeah. think he's going to be good, but not, not one of the biggest rookie walls we've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. added Terry Rozier, who I don't Terry's know, I mean, been good. Good pickup. He's been good. It's just it it's took him a few tough. games to get going, but he's been Wait, good. He's got to shake. It's just tough to shake off that Hornet stink. I uh, think the Heat beat the Sixers. I don't think I said that clearly. I, the more I think oh. about, it, I I think the Heat beat the Sixers. So I think I think it's Heat Knicks, which I love. I kind of wanted a Knicks Pacers for like old times' sake, but I feel like a, a Knicks Heat would be would be cool. Um, Mostly because the Knicks de- almost definitely get to the second round. Well, I think I think Knicks Heat. I probably take Knicks. I think it'll be. I think it's gonna be a close a close series. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I Knicks Sixers would be compelling, man. I, yeah. I mean, like, I think it would Embiid, be, but I I think the Sixers are they're just gonna struggle so much. I don't, I don't I don't think Embiid can get up and down the court that well. Like you know, if if he obviously once he's in the half court, he's unstoppable. But yeah. Throughout a whole series, throughout the forty-eight minutes of the game, like it feels a lot. I'm pretty down on the Sixers. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not the Cavs. I'm not scared of them. I will say he's playing good defense when he's tired, but that also the Sixers did not face the most imposing offenses down the stretch either. Yep, and we don't think the Cavs. I mean, excuse me, the Celtics. We're not expecting them to have any trouble, regardless who they play. Um, I would say, you know, it would be funny. Celtics well, I mean, Sixers. Yeah. I mean, right? both yeah. Yeah. Celtics getting Sixers or Heat, either way, is, is good TV. And yeah. like the, that's because the that's, Celtics, I think, will drop a game to one of those teams. Yeah. And all it takes is for a little bit of that. Uh, you know, Jason Tatum misses some fallaways. Jalen Jalen Brown starts turning the ball over, and suddenly there's just so much attention and discourse around the Celtics. I feel like it gets multiplied when there's a stumble more than with other teams. Yeah. Uh, let's, they're not let's, a title or bust yet, right? The Celtics? Yeah. I think they're title or bust. This year. No, no, I mean, well, like define bust. You mean, I like, think they can run it back next year. Oh, oh you, well, they yeah. You, yeah. They, they yeah. don't really have a choice. You're yeah. not going to find a better option than yeah, yeah, running right, it back on. Right. Back. Well, I mean, well, they, they, I mean the Bucks. This, this is the Milwaukee Bucks, too. man. The Milwaukee Bucks, if they just run back their team with Drew Holiday, we they they probably are the one seed with Adrian Griffin as a coach. Maybe and they probably have a move they can make at the deadline too to yeah. shore up whatever spot they think. Um, you know, let's like let's hop. They end up with. Uh, oh, wait, go ahead. Sorry, I was say let's hop over to the Western Conference. Let's, let's, let's. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm taking the Knicks in five. By the way, oh Knicks in five. Oh yeah, I think yeah they're yeah, really Nixon. good. With OG I'm not back. going. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Knicks in six to seven. Um, but I I think it'll be close. I'm taking. Yeah, I'm with you, Sean. Celtics lose the first game and then and then go go fo 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 after that. Um, uh, Western Conference. Let's go ahead and start at the top. Actually, with with the Thunder, we don't know who they're gonna play. So I don't even, we don't have to make a prediction. I'll just say like, I don't, I feel like it's going to be tight. Whoever they play. I think it could be tight against the Pelicans. I think it could be tight against the Warriors. I, I assume the Thunder are going to win, but like if you play the Lakers, that sucks. If you're the Thunder, like that yeah. sucks, man. Um, And it's uh, like, I like I assume the Thunder are going to advance in six or seven. Um, like maybe they get it done in four or five, but like these are just, it feels like the Western conference is so balanced that I don't expect the thunder just to crush whoever they play, which maybe we normally expect the one seed to have an easy time with the eight seed. It also goes back to like the play end is not super cool for the guys at the top either. No, like, no. like it's, it's not very the awesome time, man. Just yeah. think about it. They won't know their opponent until Friday night. Uh, for a game on Sunday. And one of the things about the playoffs is your coaching staff has time to prepare, right? Yep. So if you're the Warriors and you've got a game on Friday, you know that if you win, you're playing the Thunder. So you've yep. got guys, your scouts, they're looking at film like you're already working up the Thunder. The Thunder, their team is working up multiple teams. They yeah. Right now, yeah. they're got yeah. working on four different teams. And if that, if that isn't a disadvantage, I don't know what is. Yeah. I'm not into letting these guys choose their opponent. I think that that's super lame. No. Um, it goes away from sports, so let's just ditch that idea. Um, 
play who's in front of you, who's given to you. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, the play-in does kind of screw them. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, Keith, playing the Lakers, that's the toughest matchup, obviously. Yep. The size that they've got, Anthony Davis is is hard on them. I just I don't I don't know if anyone else is good enough to hang with them. I, I think the okay. Warriors are not they don't have enough juice, man. Um the the Thunder and their the way that they've shot the ball this year is crazy. And to be able to keep up with that and at that pace be very hard. I mean, what are you doing to Steph Curry on the bench minutes? Yeah. I mean, does Chris Paul have anything? Him. Chris Paul revenge no. series? To, to after two tours of duty in Oklahoma I, City. I just the the from out of the I mean what, what the Thunder have done this year is remarkable from out of the playoffs to the one seed they're the youngest one seed of all time when you go by average age it's it's all incredible but we talked about it last week Dave just like d- does the three point shooting maintain that's what that's right. my biggest question um when it's when you start grinding it out in the half court yeah they got Jalen Williams and Shea but like how are they able to generate offense in the half court and if they're playing a Lakers or if they're playing a Warriors team who's done it before. Who's been there? I don't know. Like I get nervous for my Thunder buddies, and I get nervous for this team. I know I'm going to cheer for against against the the, the Warriors or the um. Well, I, I have a question. The Kings. I think they can smoke the Kings. Okay, fine. I'll say. Um, that. and this is kind of a coaching question. So Mark Dagnall is yeah. going to win Coach of the Year. He's already won the Coaches Association Award. Um, we've seen that his philosophy works. Right, regular season, like very good regular season coach. Yeah. Now we're going to find out how he does with adjustments and counters. Mm -hmm. And that's a different world, man. You can be a great regular season coach and stink come playoff time. And we don't know yet with Dagnall. Now, I assume he's going to do great, but we don't know. And that, I think, is where if you've got the Warriors staff, that's a real advantage for them. If you've got the Kings staff, that's a real advantage for them. Um, the Kings personnel doesn't doesn't work for me the way that the Warriors personnel does come Mm -hmm. playoff time. But I I think that if you want to think about places where OKC might be at a disadvantage, it's the unknown. How is he going to perform? You know, how's that staff going to perform under the pressure of the playoffs? What does the counter look like? What does the counter to the opposing team's counter look like? Um, Those sorts of questions that you can only get answered in the playoffs. So that's I'm super curious to watch them because of that. Yeah. And it reminds me that. um... Sorry, Sean, but it reminds me that like a Taylor Jenkins won 107 games in the regular season <laughs> over the previous two years. And then the Grizzlies went out and lost game one of both of their, you know, yeah. series the, the, against, against lower seated opponents. Um, so, so not ideal. Uh, yeah, Sean, go ahead. Oh, it's just, I, I, I can't remember a playoff team that plays exactly like this, that has, that just forces so many turnovers. Um, and I just, I wonder if, playoff officiating will be a little different too. Like, I don't know if SGA quite gets to the line as much. Oh man. Um, And I just, I don't know if basically I think if they can maintain a really fast pace and that that's going to be like a big indicator for me is if they're still playing really fast against other teams, that's a really good sign for them. Biggest X factor for the playoffs. Will the refs swallow their whistles like they should? Um, they did not, by the way, swallow their whistles for Damian Lillard, who was grifting like crazy against the Magic, and they were they were falling for all the old tricks. Um, the Nuggets going to play either the Lakers or the Pelicans. I feel like this is going to be a tough series, regardless. I have, I think the Nuggets are the best team, and in the West, I think they're most likely to emerge from the West, and that's not a controversial opinion. It's basically a universally held opinion. But I feel like it's not going to be smooth sailing. I feel like they're going to miss Bruce Brown. I feel like they might actually miss like some of the like Jeff green. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, Christian Brown's gotten better. Peyton Watson has done some stuff, but beyond that, like if they have a single twisted ankle in their starting lineup, they're in, they're going to have trouble. I think so. Like I'm going to pick nuggets, maybe in six with the, with the road closeout over either Lakers or Pelicans. But like, I feel like that it's, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be, I think a, a journey this year if the Nuggets are, are able to repeat. Well, Dave, what do you think about the Nuggets in the first round? I'm with you. I, I've been thinking about Bruce Brown quite a bit the last few weeks for the Nuggets. Um, I just, man, Jokic is going to be the best player in just about every series. I mean, and he's going to perform the best, right? Like he's just automatic at this point. Um, we can we can debate health, which they are healthy right now, and that's that's all I know. 
I think I'd put my money on the Nuggets staying healthy over a team like the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. Um, And with the Lakers, the Nuggets just seem to have their number. You know, they they don't have anything for Jokic. uh, And and obviously out top, when they get into that two-man game with with Jokic and Murray, it's just, uh, it's lights out. So I think that they beat the Lakers in five. Maybe the Pelicans push it to six, but I I would expect them to finish off anybody in, in four or five. I'm going to take the Nuggets sweeping either team. Just oh, swish. It would be so funny if they sweep the Lakers again. Do you remember <laughs> in the offseason when yeah. the Lakers were talking about the, the Nuggets' somewhat imaginary trash talk and how they were going to have a reckoning? There would just be nothing funnier to me than them winning seven straight games against the Lakers. Out. It would still be- not actually trash talk. No, it would no, be. No, no, and it wasn't any trash yeah, talk. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. But, the coach complained about the refs, and then I feel like Bruce Brown said something on a podcast like two months later, and he's not even on the team. Uh, <laughs> but it, it it might be the the world's most competitive sweep, though. Most competitive. That, it's all. It's sweep. always yeah. going to be the one of the yeah. one of the biggest most competitive sweeps. Um, the Timberwolves are slight underdogs to the Suns. The Timberwolves are the three seed as far as gambling wise. Um, they're the three seed against the Suns. I am going to be devastated if the Timberwolves lose. I hate that Carl Anthony Towns, not that he came back, but the fact that he came back like one game, like the final yeah. game of the regular season. And now you just got a cool int- pass though. Now you got to just got to integrate him back into the thing. Nas Reed, who has stolen Malik Monk's six man of the year award. Um, all of a sudden loses his role again. I, I don't love it. Um, Sean, what's what's your prediction for Timberwolves Suns? It's so weird because I I sort of discounted that loss on Sunday for the Timberwolves because I thought, all right, I guess you can you gotta bring you gotta let Carl Anthony Towns get one game back. You know, you're probably not gonna get the one seed anyway. Oklahoma City's gonna take care of business. And then it bummed me out so much to see Carl Anthony Towns there. I know they need him offensively because the Suns have really just proven that they will just pack the paint and double Anthony Edwards and just dare the rest of the team to beat them. But I would also still do that if I were Phoenix and Carl Anthony Towns was there. I'm taking the Suns in six. Suns in six. Dave, what do you think? Timberwolves in seven. I love it. I love I, it. I think that there, there's going to be – look, Rudy Gobert was excellent this season. Um, they're going to be in drop coverage. They're going to play a lot of drop, and Phoenix is going to try to eat them up in the mid-range. Uh, I just think that Anthony Edwards and that team can score at, at a pace that can keep up with the Suns, and I don't think the Suns can guard nearly as well as the Timberwolves. I do think that the shooting is going to matter, and I think that this is a tough matchup, and especially because it's Kevin Durant. Yeah, uh, I just I, I think the Timberwolves beat them. They're tougher. Yeah, I agree that the Timberwolves are tougher, uh, but I, I'm in a tough spot here. I I made a very strong preseason prediction that I was going to fade to the Suns all year, and I was going to fade the Suns in the playoffs. And like I was, and I was right. But now the Suns are playing better, and the Timberwolves I have way less confidence in. And it's like, I feel like it's just such a bad matchup for the Timberwolves. They struggle so badly in the half court. And that's just so much of what playoff basketball is. And like, they struggle end of games. I mean, conveniently, they're playing the Suns who had this historically awful fourth quarter net rating. But I don't, I don't think it's really going to matter when it comes down to like clutch time in these games when you have Kevin Durant and you have Devin Booker. And oh, by the way, Bradley Beal is playing well. Um, so like, for me, it's it's like this gritty, tough defensive team that struggles on offense against a team that's all offense. And in the postseason, I just worry that that's it's going to go to the offensive team. Um, maybe I would feel differently if it was like a Sacramento Kings all offensive team, but I'm in a tough spot. I think I'm going to take the Suns in seven. Mike Conley's going to go one for 19 <laughs> in that game seven. And it's gonna be horrible. <laughs> it's gonna be horrible. But um, I hope. Obviously, I hope. He already signed the extension. Um, yeah, it wasn't for very much. He, yeah. he took a discount. <laughs> um, I'm. I think I got the Suns in seven. Um, and it hurts me badly. This is the series I want. I want the Timberwolves to win more than anything. 
Uh-huh. I won. Uh, I think I think the Suns are, are the bottom of my playoff cheering hierarchy. Uh, and like I like uh, obviously Kyle Anderson and Mike Conley. I want Anthony Edwards to take over the league. Please. That'd be great. Um, I just worry about um, speaking of the Cavs have a loser mentality. I worry about the loser body behavior of Carl Anthony Towns and its infectiousness. And this poor Timberwolves team who's only advanced past the first round one time. It just seems awful. And it's going to have to blow it, it up this summer. Yeah, and they can't even keep the squad together um, <laughs> because of Jalen McDaniels and Carl Anthony Towns. All right, the final I do, series. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I do like I do like Minnesota's chances better because Bradley Beal picked a fight with Anthony Edwards for no reason. I yeah, feel like that was a really bad decision to make in a game they weren't going to win. Um, um, yeah. The Clippers and the Mavericks, it feels wrong they're playing in the first round. These are the fifth and sixth best records in the NBA. Um, the Clippers swooned down the end of the year. Um, hopefully Kawhi is supposed to be back that this is also the X factor here. No word on Kawhi quite yet, but a uh, Clippers have the home court advantage. It's a very even series. As far as the gambling lines, what do you guys think? What's your prediction for Clippers Mavs, Sean Clippers Mavs. What do you think? So I have been to Clippers games before. And I don't think they really have a home court advantage. It's not like there's going to be a lot of, traveling Mavericks fans, but the atmosphere at a Lakers game at the same arena and the Clippers game at the same arena. Um, and because Kawhi's, I really like the Clippers, but I, I just, if I had to bet on Kawhi Leonard playing every game in the series, I would bet against that. And so I'm going to take mm. the Mavericks in seven Mavs in seven. I think that's yeah. what I'm leaning. Dave, what do you think? Mavs in six. Um, the the Mavs, I mean, they've looked great. Obviously, I think Luca can be the best player in any series. If Kawhi's healthy, I, I'd put him in the same category, but I just don't trust him. And, and the Clippers have just spent the last two months playing like a bunch of jerks. Like they don't really like each other. You know, um, Paul George might have one foot out the door. Uh, I, I, I just don't buy that you can get past the bad vibes come playoff time. And on the other hand, the Mavericks have been the opposite. They've been the great vibes team for a while now. They've got 48 minutes of solid, like rim running center play. If they want it, they've got guys who can stretch the floor. They've got guys who can play defense. And then their one, a one B with Luca and Kyrie is kind of insane. When you send two to the ball on Luca, he makes the right pass every single time. And when you send two to the ball on Kyrie, he splits it, and now you're you're going uh, you know five on three. So for what the Clippers like to do, I just think the Mavs are are uniquely positioned to be able to handle it. The one thing I worry about is that the Clippers have a lot of perimeter creation, and do the Mavericks have enough guys to help cover for Kyrie and Luca when when they're caught on an island? Can they can they switch? Can you trust the bigs that they've got? Can Gafford switch out? you know, on, on to Harden here and there. Those are the questions that need to be answered. But I think that the Mavs are just, they're a better team right now than the Clippers. I, I would say I have like actually so many of these series we've talked about. I have zero confidence in my, yeah, oh, in no. my picks, you know, zero. it's like, I don't, this well, is this one is parody. Yeah. This is parody. parody. Like, you tell like, like, if you ask me like, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, clearly I have no idea. Like yeah. I have no, like, I feel like I'm completely guessing. This is me filling out the NCAA tournament bracket, right? I don't, it's four versus 13. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't have it. Yeah. Like I mean, we do this these- for, look, we do this for a living. I can make an argument for all of the top six and well, maybe not in the East, all no. the top six in the West. I can make an argument that yeah. they can make a run to the finals. Every single one. I mean, at some point this year, I mean, the Clippers, when they went on their their nice stretch of basketball and Kawhi is dominant, I'm like, wow, okay, Clippers are in the mix. So Clippers, for me, when when you boil the rotation down to maybe seven or eight, it seems incredible. Yeah. And like, and I think that's what they're actually going to do. And this, oh, again, yeah. of course, we're, we're presuming perfect health. I can envision these, like, all right, Tim Hardaway Jr. and PJ Washington are are two for twenty two in the series so far on three. You know, like like that type yeah. of thing feels like it. Where like I trust like Norm Powell's going to hit his shots and like mm-hmm. Paul George and Kawhi are going to get good looks all the time. And and then there's the I think it's a massive co- coaching mismatch where I feel like 
the Clippers have a big edge right there. But what we've seen recently has been all Mavs, and it's been Luca looking amazing, and Luca and Kyrie finally working together. So, like, I think I'm gonna go Clippers in seven. But like, this is also one where like. I can see the Mavs sweep and you're like, yep, that Clippers wow. team was done. Yeah, you like, know, like, yeah. like it's one of those things where like, well, I guess I was dumb. Cause uh, <laughs> the, the factor for me is uh, James Harden is in the playoffs. On yeah. Teams, and I feel like the vibe difference between him and Dante Exum, where James Harden is still probably a better basketball player than Dante Exum. But the, I feel like it's like, a 100 on the vibe scale to a negative eight from Harden. That's uh that's, that's a good point. I mean, you got, there's so many people in this series and there's the playoff P jokes, which are <laughs> largely overrated uh, as far as what he's actually done yeah. in the postseason. Like any high volume shooter is going to have a four for 15 sprinkled in with like the 10 for 17s, you know, and stuff. So like, I don't know. I lead Clippers in seven, but like, Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe the James Harden factor I shouldn't overlook. I like we, we're all going to get our jokes off when Doc Rivers and James Harden are both out after the first round, and we're <laughs> going to be like, "How did I ever think differently?" Well, thanks, guys, for uh, well, going through this. We got a little bit of breaking news, by the way. While What's the we, breaking while news? Waiting, Blake Griffin has officially retired. Mm, one of my least favorite players ever. Thought happened three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll be at the Netflix is a joke festival in Los <laughs> Angeles next month. I assume. Is or right. It's right now. It might be happening this weekend. I don't know. Um, let's wrap this up really fast with uh, an awards segment of the program. Um, the last week of the season was uh had some gaudy shooting numbers. This is the International Stackhouse of Pancakes Award given to the worst performance in a box score. Um we had from the final week of the season several honorable mentions. Those are as soon as I find it. Caleb Martin, 0 for 9. Blake Wesley, 1 for 11. Speed Makai look 2 for 13. Chris Murray went 3 for 15, but had 18 rebounds. Uh, Gigi Jackson, Bogdan McDonovich went 4 for 17. Xavier Moon. Went six for 22. I didn't know he could do that. And Paolo Bencaro had a seven for 25. Those are just the but honorable he did missions. Win, he did win a jump ball against Boban. Yeah, that's right. So, oh, we did a mission. Two. We did. Arguably won two, by the way, because they, they recovered. They, Boban tapped it, but the Clippers got the ball both times. Yeah. Um, we didn't mention Boban missing the free throw on purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised the chicken place hasn't voided that chicken. <laughs> Like, aren't they in jewel? Aren't they would be people? They would go out of business if they <laughs> if they didn't honor the commitment because Bobon is a man of the people. Now, maybe you have to do a a little bit of work with Bobon and he does a free commercial. Has to do a free commercial. Yeah. yeah. So this, so Bobon Bobon, if you don't know, Bobon misses the second free throw on purpose to give the the fans free chicken and he builds it up like a wrestler he's talking to the crowd he's like you he's like you want this i got you he starts pointing as i got you and then he misses on purpose also clutch performance by boban if he airballs that's a violation right so he has to hit the rim and have it come off but he does it and um by the way it might be his last nba game I mean, probably say. his last maybe his last professional game because i i don't know why he would go and play anywhere else but um, the um the best, the best overwhelming joke that people made from this was, oh, it's uh, Boban goes viral when he does it, but when Jonte Porter does it, he gets kicked out of the league. <laughs> wow. Well, um, well, maybe he will be quietly kicked out of the league. Like, actually, if you see it, Boban on a Triple A baseball roster next year, you'll know that Adam <laughs> Silver had a talk with him. Well, the, some Jonte Porter news. Also That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's that, that that came out, and they're saying that he maybe didn't gamble on basketball at all. But no, but the well, the thing I saw was that he has wagered millions of dollars as a VIP DraftKings user. How so, he get, does did, has he made this much money? He I, claims he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars. What uh, state was he doing all this gambling? That was in Colorado. In Colorado, where his uh, brother plays professionally. All right, let's get to the uh, <laughs> nominees of the International Stackhouse of Pancakes Award um, as they occurred throughout the last week. We had sure, Devin no Booker to the bottom. in a loss to the Clippers was one for 11, 12 points, five assists, two rebounds, two steals, three turnovers, two personal fouls. That game happened last Wednesday. Uh, on Sunday, 
Damian Lillard was two for 14 against the magic had 16 points. Cause he gripped his way to 12 free throws, but uh, four rebounds, two assists, one steal, two turnovers, no personal fouls, perhaps try. And then Delano <laughs> Banton, Delano Banton fantasy champion. in the trailblazers final game of the year, six for 25, including zero for 15. On That's three an pointers, NBA record. That's an NBA record for most three pointers attempted without a make. He had 17 points, seven assists, three rebounds, five. That's a, oh, three rebounds, three steals, five turnovers, two personal fouls. So Devin Booker, also, though, yeah, yeah, he was ejected from that he game ejected. and ejected. That's very true. Yeah, he, uh, he started a, a dust up. The refs uh, called double technicals because it was five minutes left in a meaningless game. Like, yeah. let's just get out. Let's of just here. get out of here. This on the, over. On the, on the next trip down, he basically tackled uh Keon Ellis, who was Love it. not involved in the previous play at all. And uh, he was ejected so quickly that Banton basically didn't break stride from his flagrant foul to the locker room. Uh, <laughs> maybe he was getting Keon Ellis ready for a, potential Draymond Green. Uh yeah, that's a good point, altercation. Actually. Um I'm trying to look real fast to see if I can see how many points Banton was credited with in our negative scoring system. Uh, uh because then because you get bonus points for an ejection. Um <laughs> he got 101 points. Oh no one has God. ever broken 100 in a game. I hadn't that's even amazing. thought of this. So he missed 20 field goal attempts and got ejected. That has to be the first ever uh, he was credited with 101.5 fantasy points in our negative. You're fantasy gonna have to recreate system. the uh, Will Chamberlain photo. I think that is the uh, greatest thing I've ever seen. I think we can go ahead and give him the <laughs> the the eye shop award. He uh, passes Damian Lillard's two for 14 and Devin Booker's one for 11. By the way, the other four players that other three players in NBA history to attempt at least 12 three pointers and not make any. I mean, the previous worst was 0 for 12. He went 0 for 15. You had Eric Gordon, Brooke Lopez, and Justin Anderson, um, who each had an 0 for 12 three point game in their lives. I'm amazed that Justin Anderson was able to take 12 three pointers in yeah. the game. Congratulations to everyone involved. Well, Amazing. Dave and Sean, thank you for spending your morning with me for an excessively long episode of Fast Break Breakfast. Everybody, go buy Sean's comedy album. America's Uncle Dad available everywhere. Everywhere. Let's get him. Let's keep him above Dane Cook yeah. in the in the standings. Um, you guys can catch Dave over at the Athletic. Um, you guys are the best. Thanks for listening. And remember, breakfast is the most important thing. Yeah, no apologize for being TNG. Fair break, break, man. You understand? Remember.